Schoenberg is situated in the northern area of the Black Forest in the Kalfkreis. Since 2009, it has been officially registered as Glücksgemeinde. Happiness is key for the citizens and visitors are encouraged to enjoy themselves. With less than 10,000 residents, the earliest record of Schoenberg dates from 1177 in a deed when it was donated from Hirsau Monastery and called Schomburg. In 1603, the village was sold to Duke Friedrich von Württemberg and was part of Württemberg until the current state of Baden-Württemberg was formed in 1952. In 1883, Hugo Rumpler, a manufacturer's son, discovered the good climate of the area after he came to rest for lung disease. Eager to build on this, Rumpler built the first health resort in the village and in Württemberg. Since then, Schumburg has continued to be a Kurort. A Kurort is a place designated where one can partake in natural or medical remedies. It is more than just a medical facility in that a Kurort must also offer cultural and sports facilities as well as restaurants and hotels. The environment is a major factor in this designation and peaceful natural locations must be a reasonable distance from the town center. Schoenberg has a long history maintaining its core art status. It still maintains a well-respected clinic. Charlottenhöhe was built in 1907, and until it closed in 1973, it was a well-known sanatorium for tuberculosis. Named after the then-current queen Charlotte of Württemberg, patients came from all around to rest in the fresh air in the Black Forest and try to heal. That said, it was not a bad place to stay. Prices were kept low, so it was affordable to not only the rich. Residents were not relegated to dark rooms, but rather set up in berths in the open air with the hope that the fresh air would lessen their symptoms. By the 1960s, antibiotics had improved greatly, and these sanatoriums were no longer needed for treating tuberculosis. From 1973 to 98, it functioned as a vocational training center and a small retirement home. Since then, it has passed hands between different companies, always with the intention of opening a new facility. Now, slowly decaying to the ravages of time, it has become a hidden treasure to stumble upon after a long hike. As mentioned before, Schumburg is still a Kurort. There is a core park where people can stroll and take in the fresh air. While wandering through, one can enjoy various modern art erected for the casual stroller. There is a generations park with activity centers for both the young and the old. Or one can grab a book to read from the free library. Take a book, give a book, or simply read and relax for a few minutes. The park leads to the core house, which is home to various events such as music, concerts, and a reading room. When the weather is nice, there is also a mini golf course. As one wanders through the village, there are a few clothing stores and some craft stores for those so inclined. The Schwarzwald Wool Outlet is a great source for yarn. For scrapbookers, there is a dedicated shop open three days a week for supplies. The Rathaus, or Town Hall, is covered in wood shingles. When the Black Forest is mentioned, many associate the wooden houses found in the southern Black Forest. However, here the Fachwerk, or timber-framed houses, are covered with small wooden shingles which are then painted. Another popular image of the Black Forest is the Bullenhut, or the straw hat with giant red or black balls. This is very particular to just a few towns. Check out a future episode about Gutach to learn more. In this area, however, this is more the style of Tracht, or traditional clothing. These figures were recently erected by the local Tracht club and based on old photographs. The club meets regularly and hosts or helps in various events, such as folk dance courses, music, maypoles, history displays, etc. The Village Heimat Museum includes displays of local life in the northern Black Forest. Open every first Sunday of the month from 2 to 5, April through October, it is definitely worth visiting for the local history. Before the areas of Baden and Württemberg were combined, we were standing in what used to be Baden. Baden was actually very Lutheran, or as the Germans call the religion, Evangelisch. 
There is a very nice church in the middle of Schumburg, which was built in 1832 and is cute to visit. But the real gem is in the satellite village of Langenbrand. The Ulrichskirche in Langenbrand has a Romanesque tower which dates from around 1080. In the 1960s, the 15th century medieval artwork was uncovered and is still visible inside behind the altar. The rest of the current church was built in 1792. On the church grounds are memorials to those local residents who fell in both the world wars. You can also find a similar memorial in Schimburg. If you're like my husband, you keep a skateboard in the car and can stop by the skateboard ramps. Just behind the skateboard park is a laser tag hall. In keeping with its core org status, Schumburg maintains its own geocaches to encourage hiking. There are also various hikes offered by the local Mushroom and Wild Plants Club. Learn how to identify various edible plants. Just make sure to learn which are safe, as there are also many toxic ones. Tucked back in the woods, you can find another small library, as well as an automat of local goods such as honey and snacks. If you're into folks marching, there are three permanent trails maintained by the Day Fao Fao. There are also local paths and trail events, and many regional hiking routes go through the town. In 1993-95, as part of a school project, the Schwarzenberg Stone Circle was erected nearby in... Schwarzenberg! Approximately 300 meters long, 22 sandstone boulders were placed. Incorporate them as part of one of your hikes. Now we're in Bieselberg, one of the satellite villages of Schimberg. We're at the Barefuss Park, and we're going to go along the Barefuss Pfad, which is the barefoot path. And this young man is going to be our barefoot guinea pig. Hi. Hey, let's go. Cool, that's cold. Approximately 800 meters long, you can walk over various terrains and enjoy a sensory experience for the feet. Of course, some of the terrains are for the more adventurous than others. Please note, my son is very active in German scouts and this is simply fun for him, not torture. Bigfoot. For the sportier crowd, there is the new Aussichtsturm Himmelsglück, a large observation tower. We're by the Himmelsburg Tower in Schoenberg and we're going to go on up in a moment. Hi! Bye! Climb 300 steps or take the elevator to get a great view of the region. There are also two adventure lines to hook onto. One can ride in a harness and wrap around the tower and travel through the woods on the Waldflug fly line. The more courageous can take the flying fox to glide on their stomach through the woods. After all this wandering and hiking, there is nothing better than stopping for a treat at one of the cafes. My favorite one here is just across from the Rathaus. In addition to the standard bread and pastries, they offer decadent cakes. I am really partial to their onion tart with a cup of hot chocolate. See you there, see you everywhere.